So where I had previously left off was with Starnet++ and star removal. The idea was to be able to um, use Starnet++ to toggle on your stars on and off, essentially separate the nebulosity, your data, your deep sky object data, from the stars such that we can use to our advantage just processing the data alone without the stars such that we can maximize the contrast the details of the nebulosity in the data without affecting the stars, further bloating the stars, etc. And so this is where we left off where we had a star layer, which I can toggle on and off now. And then we had a layer in which we, we might have healed some areas where Starnet++ plus plus didn't fully remove some of the stars. And so this is where we start today in this next video. So first what I want to reiterate is that I'm going to show basic steps for just improving the data at this point. Um, I'm not going to treat this data as it necessarily should be, as this is narrowband data from a triad ultra filter, but rather I'm going to treat it as if it was just coming from a one-shot color RGB, um, no special filters in place. However, um, these techniques could be used with narrowband data if you just wanted to process it that way. Um, any future tutorials on narrowband image processing, um, I have not yet decided if I will make or not at this time, but if so, that would be down the road in the future. However, this is just um, the basics for um, enhancing the contrast essentially and what you can really do there to bring out lots of detail and make your data look the best as it possibly can. So the plan going forward in this video is we're going to adjust levels. We stretch this data pretty hard to get all the details. Let's just keep what we want. All the data is there and we can bring back what we want later. And I'll show you how to do that with part different processing techniques. Second is we want to use um, luminance data to do contrast enhancement. And um, I'll show you how we do that. Essentially, it's going to be a false luminance, but it comes from your data and it works really well. And then three, we're going to continue to do level adjustments along the way. And then four, we're going to use camera raw to adjust the contrast and also to do color adjustments and then some final noise reduction to the data before we kind of toggle on the stars and see how things are coming together. So let's go ahead and begin. So let's click on the hill layer here. Control Alt Shift E. That will stamp it to a new layer. And this is just going to be my my start layer for my actual nebulosity processing, so to speak. Um, but what I'm really going to do is I'm going to go to channels here and I'm just going to select red. And my idea is I want to create a luminance layer to enhance co contrast. So I do have a triad ultra filter so I do have um, hydrogen alpha and sulfur 2 data only in my red channel and then green is just my oxygen 3 and blue is hydrogen beta data but I'm just gonna use my red channel data because I know that's where my hydrogen alpha data is the strongest signal typically from emission nebula like this nebula NGC 7822 what I'm gonna do here is with just the red channel highlighted I'm going to go ahead and click Control A to select it all, then hit Control C to copy it. Then I'm going to toggle back on RGB. Then I'm going to go back here and I'm going to hit Control V. And what this does is it puts just the red channel um, gray luminance data that I'm going to use here in uh, an additional layer called Layer 2. And I'll just rename this to just LUM for luminance, short for luminance. And if I toggle this layer off, of course, just our data that we had previously is still below. And above that is our stars. Um, so we still have our star data, of course. And as long as they're toggled off, we're fine. We're not going to affect this layer as long as it's toggled off. And so with our luminance layer, we'll toggle that back on. We're going to go right here to the blending mode. And right now it's set to normal, but we want to go all the way to the bottom for luminosity. So now that we have the luminosity layer, created and the blending mode is selected as luminosity. What we want to do is go to this luminance layer 
select it, then hit Control L and adjust the levels. Under the channel, just RGB, we want to take the midpoint here and adjust it right at the end where the data falls off, as such. And as we get to about right there, you'll see that the contrast has definitely improved, especially in the pillar structures where we have a lot of strong signal. So then we hit OK, and then what you want to do is hit Control Alt Shift E and stamp that forward to a new layer. And then what we want to do is further levels. So we'll hit Control L, and this time we'll go into the blue channel first. And what we can do is kind of push that in, the white point in, until we get right the midpoint where the data is falling off. Same with the green channel. And the same with the red channel. But then when we get to the red channel, what we want to do is we want to push the reds because we have that luminosity that came from the red layer. And we can push the red layer in to really brighten up the reds to where we see is kind of a good point. And we can really see all our data that's, that's here now. Uh, we did bring out some noise, but uh, we will do some adjustments for that. Then we hit OK. And if I toggle off the eye here for just the luminance layer, and we just have this new levels, that's a, a lum actually it's, it's a luminance plus levels layer is really what we did. It was the luminance uh, stamped forward plus the levels. If I toggle this off, it will show us where we started from. And so you can see there's really flat contrast here where we started. And now doing this luminance operation, we've drastically improved um, the contrast in our details. So let's continue on by doing a Control Alt Shift E, and that will stamp our luminance plus levels to a brand new layer. And now what we're going to do is use the camera raw filter and continue looking into um, improvements in the contrast. So if we hit Control Shift A the camera raw filter in Photoshop will pop up and it gives us a lot of cool options. So if you scroll all the way to the top, under the basic category, you have things you can correct for or adjust like exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, blacks. Um, you can do things with texture, clarity, etc., vibrance, saturation, and there's some more advanced things you can do. Like in details, you can do some noise reduction, um, color noise reduction if you have to. And then there's the color mixer, which you can actually select color by color to enhance just that color in your um, image. And so it really depends on how things are mixing and how much signal you have from um, different emissions. But where I want to go for this is just to work on the contrast a little more. And so my highlights it typically are what? I'll look into right here and then contrast. Typically I'll pull my highlights down and so just to show you if I pull them all the way down you can kind of see it's taking the brightness away in the nebulosity region here where it's really like almost white in color. It's really bringing it down but as it does that it kind of does reveal a little bit more contrast. So what I'll do is I'll set it to about minus 30 and then with the contrast I'll pull it up as well. Let's do kind of a balanced mix here of 30 and minus 30 for the highlights. And if we want to see what we've done, we can use this square button here and it kind of shows the before versus the after. And you can even zoom up on a certain region to compare the two and see we've kind of darkened some of the darker areas and um, maintained some of the, the brightness from the luminosity layer. In there it's not as as flat of a contrast and that's okay it it does add what looks like to be a little more noise when we do that operation and so we got to be gentle with that I'd honestly maybe go minus 20 on the highlights and minus or just 20 on the contrast because of that and then I'll hit OK and then we can toggle this layer on and off to see what we've done. And I like that because it kind of darkens the darker areas some while bringing out the brighter areas, making the pillars kind of stand out a little more. 
So now I'll click on the CR contrast layer, Control Alt Shift D, stamp it to a new level or a new layer, and we're going to adjust the levels again. So Control L, and we'll go into the individual channels. Uh, red is basically fine. What we need to do is adjust green and blue here by shifting the white point to the left just to pull it in um, to where the midpoints at the data end of the data there. And we'll do the same with the blue channel. And we can even go into the green channel and push it just slightly if we wanted to maybe show a little more orange color. Not, not much because um, we can actually destroy the data here if we go too far. But maybe just a, a little bit more in about right there and we'll hit OK. So now what we'll do is do another Control Alt Shift E, stamp it forward, and this time we're going to adjust the colors um, of of the nebula here. And so we're going to do that with the camera raw filter. So we hit Control Shift A. And so while this is loading, what I want to say is um, I'm processing this as if it's just straight off a one-shot color camera, or you could even say a DSLR and you're just wanting to maximize contrast and detail in the nebulosity. Um, I'm not processing this as narrow band data where I'm combining various signals. I could do that. Um, however, I wanted to start with the basics of just being able to understand how to um, bring out the, the detail in terms of just contrast, um, adjustments, highlights, um, et cetera, things like that to maximize the, the look and the, the actual signal of your data. And so what I want to do is just some light color adjustments. There's reds, yellows, and oranges in this just naturally with how the data is combining. And so if I, if I go here to color mixer in camera raw and I select orange, I can actually shift this around and you can see the data of where um, orange is kind of mixing. And you can look at the, you can actually change the hue of the orange however you want. So say I, I want to change it to more yellow because um, the yellow is in a greater color contrast to the red. And by using color contrast, you actually make details pop out a lot more. So if I go this way, it doesn't really make sense because I don't get a lot of color contrast. The colors are, are almost the same. But if I go all the way to the yellow side, we get a lot more color contrast. And the image becomes more interesting because more detail shows through differently in different colors. As opposed and so then I'd want to go into the red and kind of make the red maybe a little darker in red or something that really brings out the contrast slightly so maybe not fully um, to the left here right because I don't like that color it looks like uh, magenta or fuchsia pinkish uh, uh, maybe maybe slightly just to enhance the, the contrast not too much maybe like minus 15 and then push the saturation some in the reds as such like that and then I'll hit OK and and so now if I toggle between what we had last done and now you really see um, some more color contrast occur and pull out some of the signal in just certain regions where that that orange was present and it really starts creating something that looks um, nice and very interesting now if we go control alt shift E stamp it forward um, we can go on to our next uh, phase of the image, of processing the image. However, I just want to say at this point, the ultimate way to create color contrast and, in, and maximize your details through color contrast is definitely processing uh, your, your channels um, differently such that you actually can get unique signal responses in each channel. However, that's only for narrowband processing. This, this, once again, is just kind of covering the basics of just enhancing detail even within a, a normal RGB one-shot color image um, that you get straight out of your one-shot color after stacking. And uh, at this point, we've kind of gone through a lot to get as much contrast as we can um, by using camera raw filter, some basic techniques with luminance um, and levels adjustments along the way. And so the next process that's in kind of a basic workflow, in my opinion, is just some minor noise reduction. And so 
Um, the first minor noise reduction, what I'm going to do is, is once again, a camera raw filter with just texture. And let me go. Hit control shift A. And let's focus in on this pillar structure. You can see there's a lot of noise here. And the first step, like I said, is, is texture that I want to adjust. So before I get into this, I'm just going to take one quick side note and say that we're not really dealing with curves much. And a lot of tutorials really say play around with curves, do this and that. Um, I, I will go into curves to adjust things. And perhaps that's one way. Um, with curves, you just have to know what what is occurring and you can do things um, in terms of channels red green or blue and you can adjust just the reds or just the blues or just the greens and you have a midpoint you have your whites and you have your blacks and you can really um, have full range control over that uh, I, I i tend to just like to work with camera raw and uh, adjust things like highlights contrasts etc uh, i don't find a big advantage using the curves um, unless i'm working with uh, narrow band data. But in this case with texture, getting back to texture, what we want to do is use texture to our advantage to kind of minimize some of this noise. So we can actually, I'll show you, if I bring it back all the way to the left, you can see that um, we've lost a lot of detail, but we've also lost a lot of noise. And so as we go inwards towards zero, by the way, if you double click on any of these arrows, it will automatically set it back to zero. But if you if we go back just a little bit, We can even say, let's just stick at minus 30 and go back to our image and toggle on a preview. Um, it's going to be hard to see at this detail level, maybe 33%. You can actually see it's kind of smoothed out a lot of uh, um, the noise in our signal without really destroying our data. And so that's, that's the first step I like to do. And so that was just minus 30 on texture, so I'll hit OK. And that's applied. I can even toggle it on and off. So that's before, this is after. It's kind of given it a minor um, noise reduction there. Then after that, I'll hit Control Alt Shift E, and we'll go back into Camera Raw. And this time, we're just going to do noise reduction. And we don't need much here since we've played around with the textures. If I go to 100%, it's not terrible, but under Detail, we can do a few things. So color noise reduction, we can see what that does if we go all the way up. It doesn't seem to really help us much in the case of this image because we, we, we didn't do too much to um, really add a lot of color noise. There, there is some, and so we could leave it or, or not. I'll just not leave it or we can just do it at 50% if we wanted. And with noise reduction, we can kind of see what happens. If I pull it all the way, you see it really destroys your data, completely just destroys it, all your detail. It's still there, but it just looks um, really kind of muddy and gross. And But we can use it to our advantage, um, maybe at like a 15 or so, to just try to make our, our, our data look decent. Maybe that's even too much. I'd probably go 10 say okay and so if I click off all these other channels and and this is where we started right this is the level where we started and this is where we are now if I toggle this off this is where we started and now this is where we are just using these uh, basic techniques and so we've definitely enhanced our data significantly and really brought out some contrast and detail. So as one of the last steps, what I'd like to do is go ahead and stamp this to another layer, Control alt shift e and then we want to just enhance the texture slightly. Or sorry, not the texture, the clarity of the image. Kind of bring out um, some more of the detail. It's a way to sharpen the data essentially without um, really using a, a sharpening tool that Photoshop offers. Rather, it's a little bit more sophisticated. And it's right here by texture. Um, not much. We can see what it does if I if I take it all the way down. 
details really blur out. I take it really high. Things get really wild and crazy, but what, what I like is just maybe to set it at about a 10 or, or 15, 20, depending on what's what the data is looking like and so this is before and this is kind of after so it's hard to see what real effects are occurring it looks like I brought back a little bit more noise but I also brought back some minor details that in the in the darker regions like these um, little darker sections are just brought out a little bit more and here, pretty similar. The darker areas did seem to get a little bit darker and a little more pronounced, which I like overall. Um, so I'll hit OK. And we can toggle on and off between the two. And definitely you can see it around the darker areas some more details, kind of more pronounced, more contrast is causing these details in the darker regions to look a little bit, stick out a little bit more. So control alt shift E and now we'll just look at the saturation and vibrancy and I'll boost it a little bit, but not much. We already have a good amount. So this is just, of course, by eye. Um, I'll probably play with the vibrancy a little bit more, like at a 20 or so to 30 range. Now let's do 35 and maybe a vibrancy of five or sorry, a saturation of five. Say okay. And now we can see where we've come from to where we are. So once again, here's the start layer. Everything else is turned off. If I toggle this off, um, we'll see this is where we were at. This is where we started. And now this is where we've come. And so a lot of the detail it just uh, pops out a lot more and looks cleaner now that we've done this these processing steps all right and so now we'll hit Control alt shift e and stamp this to a new layer so now what i'd like to do for this final layer is really um, bring back some of the shadow detail and once again we'll just use camera raw control sh control shift a and we'll go straight to shadows and just peg it to a hundred. Um, and you can see where it's really brought out some of the detail in this bottom area more on, on the outskirts. Yeah, I kind of like that. Bringing back some of that data we really tried hard to stretch in the beginning and it doesn't add too much noise back. It gives it a nice effect. But at this point, for a standard um, kind of RGB image processing, basic workflow for enhancing detail and contrast, this is kind of where I would um, stop and add the stars back in. And so if I do that, um, this kind of is near the final image. I say near because um, these stars were created during the initial stretch. And like I said, we stretched pretty hard, but we used the arc sign stretch such that our stars would stay under control the most. But even so, we do still have some star bloat, a minor, but not significant. And how I adjust that is with curves. I just hit Control M and if we go to the center here of our histogram and we just pull down, um, our stars will drastically minimize without having to use any Photoshop minimization tools, etc., which can actually cause weird holes to form if, if we do that around some of our data or strangeness in the halos. But if we, well, I'll be drastic and show that if we go all the way down, stars are gone. As we come back up, our stars return and fainter at different levels. And so this can be to your personal taste, where you like it, your own spin on the image. I like to decrease it just ever slightly to remove um, some of that bloating and really make the detail of the nebula stick out. So I'll hit OK there. And this is kind of the final image for a basic workflow. And let's go ahead and hit Control Alt Shift E 
and stamp that to a new layer. So now this new layer can, includes our stars. But let's see where we started versus uh, where we finished out at. So here's kind of just in the terms of the details where we ended up and here's where we started. Here's where we ended up and here's where we started. So we really maximized the detail in the shadowed regions as you can see, as well as the contrast in this pillar structure. And then once we combine that with the stars, after we did some star minimization using just levels, or I mean curves, sorry, this is our final uh, processed, processed image. So once again, this is, isn't my current workflow that I use. This is just kind of what I consider a basic RGB contrast and detail enhancement workflow. What I do now is more narrow band style processing in Photoshop. And I have a lot of my own uh, secret recipes and formulas that I don't know if I'm quite ready to share, honestly. Um, but perhaps in the future, I will go down that route. But until then, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial series on processing your data. And until next time, I'll see you then.